About this OKB-0 Emmerich was talking about. Its location and features match the citadel in the mountains northeast of the Soviet base camp. Built during the time of Alexander the Great, it was left in ruins following one of Genghis Khan's campaigns. Its occupants changed time and again due to war, and it was expanded on more than one occasion. Ultimately, it fell into the hands of the Soviet philosophers. The Soviet army was using it as the headquarters of its Afghan invasion force. But it would seem that Skullface's connection with the philosophers gave him license to develop Sahelanthropus there. And that's what Emmerich was doing at the place, before he got the axe. But OKB is a designation the Soviets use for weapon design bureaus. There's no way they'd have one of those in Afghanistan. And, in principle, the numbers that follow OKB are always integers above one. There is no zero. Perhaps this was a secret facility of the Soviet and Chinese philosophers dating back prior to World War II. Though it's more likely Skullface just picked a fake name that more or less fit the Soviet's pattern. It doesn't go there often, but he sure as hell won't miss this. They use the heliport on top of the tower for his visits. Start by heading for the heliport. Then wait for your chance to make contact with Skullface. It seems Sahelanthropus's armor is made from depleted uranium. That offers some serious protection. The U.S. military is planning on using it for its main battle tanks, too. Maybe that's where Emmerich got the technology. Uranium? They're using nuclear fuel for armor now? No. What they use for nuclear fuel is uranium-235, which is extracted from natural uranium. Depleted uranium is a byproduct of that process. Sort of like the leftovers, I guess. The garbage. Uranium-235 makes up 0.72% of natural uranium, whereas depleted uranium contains only 0.2%. What are the benefits of using it for armor? It's a pretty short list. Uranium's a heavy metal, like lead, meaning it can hold a greater amount of kinetic energy. But it also boasts a hardness closer to tungsten, that makes it an ideal material to use for, say, armor-piercing ammunition penetrators. But it's not the best choice for armor. Its volume is less than that of ceramics, but for an equal weight, you could end up with less protection. So why use it then? According to Emmerich, it came down to him being unable to source ceramics technology from a manufacturer. Plus, given that it's an upright walking vehicle, he wanted to reduce the bulk of certain areas. Despite all that, Depleted uranium still makes for some tough armor, and Emmerich says it's been proven in live fire tests. It stops most Soviet tank shells. Emmerich uses externally powered legs of his own design. It's bionics technology, a product of the U.S. military's failed attempt to develop a powered exoskeleton. All the wearer has to do is apply a little force, and the actuators continue the movement in that direction but his legs are unique. Instead of using a hydraulic mechanism, the actuators run off metallic archaea. That increases the actuator's reaction speed and also enables him to lock and release the joints at will. The legs are a nifty little gadget, but they have two clear weaknesses. First, they're dependent on external power, maybe because he built them knowing he couldn't leave his lab. There's no internal battery. That's why they won't work if they aren't plugged in. Second, and this is more than just a weakness, the legs are directly connected to his bones. Could be to minimize signal loss and the order's output to the legs and the drive response from them. Either way, Emmerich has used bolts to attach load-bearing parts directly to his femurs, probably by mimicking surgical treatment for compound fractures and the like. But the end result is those legs and his body are fused together. And that appears to be how he's able to move them so precisely. But that also means that any shock to the legs would be delivered right to his bones by way of those bolts. The same is true if he encounters the corrosive metallic archaea. If the corrosive archaea ate into the exposed bolts, they'd reach the endoskeleton parts and eat through them too in the blink of an eye. The doctor's bones are full of holes to accommodate all the bolts. They're like sponges. If he were to lose the reinforcing parts, even the tiniest bit of force or weight would snap his bones. So when I dangled those corrosive metallic archaea in front of him, he realized straight away what would happen. Life wouldn't be worth living if he lost those legs of his. 
I'd bet that is what the doctor fears the most. I just helped him imagine what it would be like. Thanks to that, I got the information we needed without either of us getting hurt. You know how he is. He's probably already over the shock. The better you know your adversary, the easier it is for you to get information from them. And vice versa.